if these characters would stand still for one second and reflect, the film would stop. So the music just needs to go on and on and on and just say like, listen, they are just like little animals and they start to eat each other at a certain point. I like cannot stop talking about this movie. I loved it so much. How did you react when you received the first version of the script? In the first version, I, I did like the game a lot because I used to play the game with my friends a lot. We we call it werewolf or, or more than art in my language or mafia or whatever. Uh, and I would always end up being very emotional about it and feeling left out and all of that. So I was like, oh my God, this is such a great vehicle to talk about human nature and group behavior and just like, is the killer inside of us or outside of us? And then we got Sarah the Lab, who's a playwright. And we, um, you know, we, we started to work on the scripts and, and make it into what it is right now. It's funny because a lot of people spent the pandemic playing that game Among Us, which has like a very similar concept. And we yeah. all turn on each other so quickly. <laughs> Exactly. That's the scary thing about this game. It's psychological warfare. You never know which secrets are going to come out when. It is a thrilling game, but of course, it is just a metaphor for all the the relationships that they have with each other and how they act and how their relationship with their phone is and all of that. How did the cast come together? What a, what an epic cast. Yeah, so the first uh, a person to came on board was Amanda Stenberg. She's also an executive producer on the film. It was very important to me since I'm making as a 46-year-old woman, I'm making a film about Gen Z, that I would collaborate with them and really make them part of it and make them responsible also for the film. Like, I'm used to working as a stage actress, you know? It's not just I'm going to do what the director tells me to do. I want to be responsible. And then Pete Davidson, I really knew from the start I wanted him as David. I wanted to have his darkness. I wanted to really also use him as an actor, you know, and not just a comedian or or goofy or so, like a personality. And, and he's really open to that and he did such a great job. So getting this cast together was the most fun, as you can imagine. Some are comedians, some are classically trained, some are film actors, and it's just a, a wonderful group. It seems like a lot of like, almost like you were just like pointing and shooting and they were just going all the time. I think for me, it was very important that, I don't know if you know Casafetti's films where it looks completely effortless and real and authentic, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they were prepared like soldiers. You know, they they had to know their lines as if it was a theater play. To to make it look so real and 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 and, and loose and, and, and sexy, you, you need a a lot of preparation and 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 they really went went for that and, and that we were open to that and that really excited me. Another aspect that I really loved was the soundtrack. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about putting that together? So the soundtrack, of course, so it is very important if you, if you make a film about young people that you actually have the vibe that, that they have in the world that they live in and, and what kind of music do they listen to. So I, all the, the needle drops that you hear in the film, which is the tracks that you hear in the film, all of them came from them. They gave me their playlist they, and they just sort of chose those songs with me. And then I worked with Disaster Piece, who's a composer on the score and it was just an incredible uh, collaboration where I, I called out a film uh, Run Lola Run which is a German film it was very famous back in the day where it just had a techno soundtrack she was just going and going and running and running and with this too if these characters would stand still for one second and reflect the film would stop so the music just needs to go on and on and on and just say like listen they are just like little animals and they start to eat each other at a certain point so yeah. we had a lot of fun creating that music and then we have the track, the original tra uh, track made for the film by Charlie XCX, and that was just heaven to work with her. And then you're talking about making Gen Z, and you use that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the name of it. But it's like that board in the house, and I'm in yeah. the house board from TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was so. You know, of course, the film is more a dark comedy than anything else. And board in the house is, you know, of course, the pandemic gives us all that feeling, right? Being locked up, and 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 I think it's just the, the most ironic. And and I love that song, board in the house. So it was me really too. Important. Yeah, it's just the greatest song. And so, of course, it was a, a little hard to get the rights, but they were really into it. Uh, and, and I was so grateful when we when we got it. I love that. And lastly, I'll just ask you, I think this is your second film and what a freaking movie. So what is next for you? <laughs> I want to go. So my first film was a very dark erotic thriller and I want to go back into that space. So my next film is going to be an erotic thriller. <sighs> very much looking forward to that. Thank you so much for your time, Alina. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.